I'm here for Terry's Tuesday's mm. chat, and uh, we're just going to take you back to your very <laughs> first gig. Um, so tell us about your first gig. You, you're not actually gigged, but you had been playing with your oh, dad. Oh, yeah, rehearsing with dad and yeah. to, to sing. And uh, he threw me into this club, Radcroft Club, because they're in Bear Pit, so it was ill. <laughs> so I'd never been in a working men's club in my life, and I went and he said, Your mother will go with you. And I, turned, I was 14 and a half, and I turned up at the door. I had no long trousers, I got short trousers on. Right. <laughs> <laughs> it's a joke, isn't it? I didn't turn up, they weren't going to let me in. He can't come in here because he's not old enough. <gasps> so anyway, the concert said, he comes to me, he said, he's helping us out tonight because of being his poorly. Oh, right, so the guy on the door said, well, you can come in, but you can only come on stage when you're actually working on stage. You've got to drop stuff in the dressing room all the time. You can't drink beer, obviously. Oh. You can only drink lemonade and you've got to sit there, uh, you know, until they call you. And the artists will come tonight, who are very big stars. Oh my goodness. In trouble, it's called The Sweethearts in Harmony. No pressure. So me and my mum sat in the dressing room and all of a sudden, this guy came in, Sweethearts in Harmony, they call them Ernest, Ernest and Daphne. Ernest Johns and his wife Daphne. Right. And he said to the concert said, right, he says, where's the, where, where's the pianist? So the concert said, there's a boy, you see, so he like went white to this wallpaper here. He says, you're joking. And he said, look at the stuff I've got to do. So he, he, he gave me the music, he said, do you think you can play that? I said, well, I don't know it, but I'll have a go. He said, so they, they used to do like 15 minute spots. Right. In, in clubs in them days. In them days, there were no microphones either. All right. Mm. So there were a piano and two singers going on stage. Like there used to be stars called Anne Ziegler and Webster Boo, were big stars on the radio like that. So anyway, we get on, and uh, they did very, very well. Were there a back, were there a drummer and a bass player as no. well? So you were so exposed, it was just, just me. you. He was an upright piano. With the back facing out to the audience, so I got the. I, I came out of the dressing room. There's a key. There's a piano keyboard. Right. So I was going to do it. So the the concert said, said, "Play something else. So play something before we start, Terry." So uh, I'm playing something a bit lively, and I can't remember I don't know what it was. And it went quiet. And all of a sudden, because they couldn't see me. No. The, the, the big burly man with pint pot in his hand. Looking over at the top of the piano, and he said, It's a it's a bloody kid. <laughs> Great piano. All right, so that's that. So they wonder who it was, because they couldn't see him. No. Anyway, they went on with Ernest and Daphne, and it did very well. Good. At the end of the night, they walked off to a stand innovation, mm. and he came off. Anyway, came in, he said, Well done, lad. Anyway, the concert secretary came to pay me. For the night, some seven shillings and that'll get what we end it. We shout to get to be mother anyway. And he says, Whatever you do, don't get rid of him. Fantastic. So it's what do you mean? He said, Whatever you do, don't get rid of him. No, and they didn't do. And I was there for about two and a half years. Where are you? Working for all different kinds of acts that came in. Mainly singers at the time. Yeah. And till I get to 17 and a half, 18, and then it's RF time, isn't it? Right. Did you enjoy that? Oh, yeah. Pressure. But, <laughs> but the funny thing is, if they get to know you're a decent pianist at this club, yeah. they like test you. So they used to put stuff in front of you you'd never seen before. And that was the first time with Ernest Jones, uh, he came back a couple of years later and to see me again with uh, Daphne and he, he was the first one I'd ever seen or played the soliloquy from Carousel which lasts about seven and a half minutes if you listen to it and he put that in front of me and he went it went through it with me with a change of the tempo etc etc and we did it did you have a page turner? No. That must have been this long. No. Maybe it was the page was in the book. Oh no. <laughs> Handwritten what, what do you mean? Printed. Page turner. <laughs> I just wrote
ruins everything having to whip your page, doesn't it? Yeah, but no, you have to be, you. turn the edge of the cut. Let, yes. Yeah, if you know you're going to have to go, you have to turn the edge of it, won't you? So was it printed or handwritten? It was printed. It right. was from the score of Carousel. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Brilliant. And that's, that, like, <laughs> the stuff they throw at you is amazing. But when we come out uh, from then, uh, uh, for about a year, I went to the Rotherham, Street, Rotherham Trades Club. Right. In, in Rotherham, which was up, like a step up. Oh boy, wasn't it? Before I went into the RF. Right. I came back and I went back there, picked up where I left off. Oh, good. And they wanted a little band. They wanted to have dancing on a Friday night, so I formed a little band. It was six, seven piece band, you know. Right. They had piano, bass, drums. No, piano, bass, drums, and three front line, three or four front line, yeah. Trumpet, tenor, trumpet, trumpet, trombone, tenor also. Who okay. used to double clarinet. Yeah. So, again, the writing came into being, didn't it? So did you arrange for that band I then? I managed to pick some what they called Jimmy Lally arrangements up at the right. time. They were quite basic dance arrangements to get going. Oh, but other, other tunes that came into your head that were coming through at the time, you know, oh, I like that one. That's like a nice quick step. So I used to write it. There we go. Here. So you built a library, up, didn't you? After a while. Yeah. So they all then all of a sudden the Greaseborough Club, not this place here, started to come into the fore. And because I'd done that with the band at the da at the at the shape train, the guy that owned, that ran the Greaseborough Club, Les Bull, at the time had a big ballroom there. Right, and they wanted us to go there on Tuesday night, which we did do. That's another nice work, wasn't it? Tuesday night gig, yeah. yeah. And they also got in that ballroom a, 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 an electronic organ, a Compton. Never seen one of them before. And an organist who, uh, who was a little bit demented, who didn't like, she if used to play in between for us. Oh, you yeah. You know what I mean? Used to do a spot. A spot. And she did a spot. Yeah. So we had we had to do things that she did and she you know, etc. Yes. Yeah. In the meantime, they were building another concert room on the back of Greensborough. And that was gonna be the big piece of resistance for the they were going to, his idea, Les Bull, was to get the big stars in from stage and screen. A lot of the a lot of the theatres were closing. Television that started to come on. So a lot of these big stars were playing to 30, 40 people on the front row. So they were looking for other venues, right. you know, to find out, you know. In the meantime, before then, while they're still building this, Ronnie Dukes and Mickey Lee came in for me because their mother in law used to play for them, Violet. And it, 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 which was great because he used to use her as a clown, you know, taking the mickey out of her on the piano. All right. But he wanted to move on to a different level. Okay. So he asked me, and a drummer from Doncaster called Barry, Barry Wooten, to go around with him playing as, as a new act, Money Dukes and Mickey Lee. Brilliant. And that's what I did. Do you believe Fantastic. it there? Fantastic, yes. Now, look up Ronnie Jukes and Ricky Lee, because they were from round here as well, weren't they? They actually, Ronnie were from Rotherham, but they finished up living in Cawthorn. Right. Well, I'll, let, I'll carry on to that. Right, that is your Tuesday chat with Terry today, and we'll tune in next Tuesday for some more stories from Terry mm. Harrington. Nice to see you, Catherine. You too.